everyone, Electro here. Finally got it done. This is my inlet manifold for my 4 horsepower Briggs motor. Um, there's the quenching tubes there. It's angular. I'll, I'll run through a series of photographs I've taken uh, with this, just how I've made it, etc. Um, it'll give you a clear or a clearer idea of what I've done and why I've done it. First, there's my um, generator. It's just a four horsepower Briggs, 240 volt AC. There's the um, quenching tube, when, or sorry, the quenching tube in place when I was first fabricating the tube. Now you can see there's a um, machine ledge just out there. I've just done that by hand with a tungsten carbide burr because, like I said, I don't have a lathe or anything like that. So everything I've got to do, I've got to do it by hand. Uh, same with the um, the metal base, all that. I've just made that by cutting up a washer, um, as you can see here. That's what it originally was, and um, I've just drawn the design out there and cut it out with a hacksaw and uh, ground the inside out with a tungsten burr again, and then just welded it all together. There. Same with the pipe. I, um, because of the shape of the inlet manifold, I just had to hammer it as best I could to a, to a shape to suit. And again, weld it all together, pass it through. Now this is my HHO inlet, it goes through there. And as you can see, it protrudes six mil or so past the, the baseline. That's to get it as close as I can to the inlet port, which sits about there. Again, I'll run through the photos with that and you'll get a clearer idea of how and what. And that's the, um, the inlets for it up there. This will go to the gas processor for the air intake and that's the HHO injection there. I've got to work out a place yet for the um, exhaust gases and how to do it but um, that's just an add-on which I can easily do later on so I'll see how it goes. But anyway, back, back to this. Uh, there it is there without the chrome cap on it. Um, originally I made... there it is there with the chrome cap on it. Look. It has there. Now, with that originally, I made one of these out of um, ceramic, it, but it didn't work out too well. It ended up cracking because it's so thin and it's a different coefficient of thermal expansion to the alumina tubes. So in this case, it um, it cracked. So I had to make a, a metal one. Now this one, that one's um, chrome. So for a casting, it didn't work out too bad. Oh, I've got a few close-ups later on of it. There it is from the top. Now, there's the, the engine. There's the original intake port. Or in, sorry, the intake manifold. Sitting off the head of the intake port there. That's the, the intake port with the inlet valve. And the nozzle sits right smack in the middle there. In retrospect, I should have lifted that and have it running more or closer to that edge there, but maybe that's for generation two or something like that. Now there's the head with the intake manifold off. And there's the intake manifold that I've made sitting on the head. Now you can see there the reason for that angle, otherwise it would hit the fins of the um, flywheel on the top there, so I angled it like that. You can see it there a bit better, so it'll clear everything. Yeah, it bolts on there. I've also made a new gasket for it. Easy enough to do, just cut it out of um, gasket material. There's how it sits on there. Again, the side view. And sitting again on the head, just holding it down. That's it, passing steam. Now, there's a lot of pressure there. There's four bar pressure of uh, steam, which is about 50 or 60 psi or something like that. But the resulting steam trail is about four foot long, so the, the nozzle can move a substantial amount of gas, provided there's the pressure. Uh, there's a close-up of it there. Again, this was the chrome casting that I've made. Originally, I just made this pattern out of wax 
and did the lost cast uh, lost wax casting technique, which I've shown you all before in previous videos. But um, after it's cast, sandblasted it and polished it up, and um, as you can see, the fits quite well. Now that hole is ten thou, and the fit gap, which is pretty close, pretty much everywhere except maybe these two areas here. Hang on, I'll get a bit of close-up of it somewhere. No, that's it, yeah. That area there, and maybe... I think that's just a bad angle, but yeah, it seals pretty much everywhere except here, but it's still, that gap there is smaller than the quenching tube itself, and all this is sealed inside with investment material anyway, so... No gas can get to these to that anyway, so as it is, it's pretty good now because that's bonded to it or to the inside tube with the investment material. The only way to get that off now really is to force it off because that the bonding material is good to over two thousand degrees Celsius, which is i mean the the housing would not before that, so anyway, that's where I am so far, so I'll keep you keep you posted so post your thoughts bye for now